Hello and welcome to this episode of Positively Negative. In this video I'll be looking at this, the Zeiss Icon Contina Matic 2. It's a hell of a name, it's a hell of a mouthful, but it's a really cool little camera. Firstly, Zeiss has a strange naming system for their cameras. There's millions of continas and retinas and... Uh. So what exactly is the Zeiss Icon Contina Matic 2? Well, it's a 35mm film camera. Okay, so it takes 35mm film. But it's a viewfinder camera. Now that means that you have no focusing aids. You don't have a rangefinder patch and you're not looking through the lens when you take the photograph like in an SLR, so you can't focus properly. Focusing is done by estimating the distance to the subject. All you have is this viewfinder window which is really nice and bright and easy to use but there's no indication in the viewfinder itself whether or not your shot is going to be in focus. So you have to use the focusing scale. Now scale focusing sounds more difficult than it is. Basically the lens has got markings on it um, ranging from just below one meter all the way till infinity. Now you as the photographer have to estimate the distance to your subject. Um, so if you estimate that the subject is three meters away, um, then you align the little arrow on the front of the lens with the three meter mark on the lens and then hopefully your subject will be in focus, right? Now, that sounds a lot more difficult and a lot scarier than it actually is, but we'll get to why that is the case shortly. So first things first, when you look at the camera, if you look at the top plate, you'll see that there's not a hell of a lot going on there, in fact. Uh, going from left to right on the top you'll see your film uh, rewind knob which is a sort of kind of finicky screwy thing which doesn't work nearly as nicely as the um, the lever system in later cameras you know that you know the one that pops out and you sort of wind it like that winding it with the, with screwing it with your fingers like this takes forever and it's exhausting and your fingers get tired and your wrist gets sore and it's, it's actually pretty awful but that's that's really the worst part about the camera so you know don't 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 write it off just yet then next to that you'll see a ISO reminder. Now that's important, this is just a reminder, it's not coupled with the light meter. Um, if, you change your, uh, if you change settings on the top panel, it's not changing settings on the light meter. It's just there to remind you what film you have in the camera. So if you're somebody who puts a roll of film in the camera and leaves it there for nine months and you forget what it is, then that might be useful for you. I never use it because uh, I always forget to remind myself to use it. Uh, and besides, I, I never keep filming the camera that long because I want to see the pictures. Next to that, there's a shoe for a flash gun or maybe an external light meter if your one's broken or an external range finder or something like that. And then next to that is your light meter window. This camera comes with a selenium based light meter, which is really cool because it means it doesn't need a battery. Everything that's happening inside there is happening by means of a chemical reaction. The selenium in the meter is reacting to the light and giving you some kind of readout. Um, so the meter at the top, is, it's, got a, it's a very interesting system. So basically, you point the camera at your subject, right? At the camera. Okay? And now it's doing a sort of measurement of the whole scene. It's not a spot meter or anything like that. Anyway, at the top panel, you'll see a little line. Now, your goal is to adjust your aperture ring until the little circle overlaps the little line. It's like a, it's like a game, it's like a little game that you play with yourself every time uh, you take a photo. So you've got to align the little circle with the little dot. And once you've aligned the circle and the dot, what you've done is something quite cool. You have aligned every shutter speed and every aperture value that is a correct exposure for that scene. So in other words, as I'm looking at the camera now, it is telling me that the correct exposure is f8 1 60th of a second but it's also telling me that the correct exposure is f11 1 30th of a second or f16 1 15th of a second or f5.6 1 1 25th of a second right now i know that sounds complicated but it's really not it's quite cool the camera is giving you options it's saying do you want a very deep depth of field here because if you do then shoot at f16 and um, 1 15th of a second. Or is the action moving really quickly? Do you need to shoot at 1 300th of a second? Well, then you have to stop, I mean, open up all, all the way to f2.8. Um, so that's quite cool. So it's giving you the whole range of correct exposures. And I've never really seen another system like that before. 
Next to the, the light meter window, you'll see a frame counter. It's a manual one. You have to start it at zero every time you, you start a new um, roll of film, but um, it just ticks on to the next uh, frame every time you, you uh, cock the shutter. Then there's a shutter release button as well. That's just got a normal thread um, for a normal cable release. But the shutter, listen to how nice the shutter sounds. Oh, it's so nice. And that's because uh, Zeiss has got a uh, leaf shutter in this lens. Um, now that leaf shutter means that it's, it's quiet. There's no, um, there's no mirror obviously because it's not SLR. And that leaf shutter means that it's quiet and that it can synchronize with a flash at all speeds. So let's talk about the speeds then, the, the, the shutter speeds. This camera is not uh, going to set any world records for a fast shutter. The fastest this camera can go is 1 300th of a second, which is a strange number. Normally it would be 1 250th of a second, right? But this is 1 300th of a second. Then it opens, it goes down to 1 second in bulb mode. So yeah, no, no 1 500th of a second, definitely no 1 1000th of a second. So, you know, you, you, you're losing out a little bit there. Um, so if it is a particularly bright sunny day, you might find that the shutter speeds are too slow. But yeah, just shoot at f16 and you should be good. Now, because the lens is a leaf shutter, um, all the settings for the camera are actually found around the barrel of the lens. So it's not like an SLR camera where the shutter speeds are at the top on the top panel, on the top plate of the camera, and then the apertures are around the lens. Um, in this case, the apertures the aperture and the shutter speed and even the ISO setting for the um, light meter are around the barrel of the lens. Now that might take a whole six seconds to get used to um, if you're not used to it but you get used to it so quickly and it actually is a quite a cool system because all you have to do is you take your picture cha -ching, and you look at the top of the lens and all your information that you need to know is there. You've got your your scale focusing, uh, your, your focusing distance scale, and you have your aperture values and you have your shutter speed values, all right uh, as you look down on the lens, which is very uh, convenient. At the bottom of the camera, at the bottom of the lens, you will find your ASA settings. Now ASA is just an old fashioned way of saying ISO, but the numbers are the same. And that is to set your sensitivity of your light meter. So it ranges from ASA 12, ISO 12 film, which is very slow, I don't even think you get that anymore, um, all the way till ISO 1600, which if you're, say now you're pushing black and white film, 1600, that's pretty cool. Um, and anyway, if you're shooting at 3200, just add a stop in your mind, you know, uh, you can do it, I promise you. Watch my other video where I explain how exposures work. Now it's important, this dial at the bottom is actually setting your light meter. The top one is a reminder, it's not connected to the light meter, the bottom one is connected to the light meter. Okay, so you make sure that you set your, your light meter at the bottom of the lens. The lens itself is a 45mm f2.8 uh, Pantar lens, I don't know if it's Pantar or Pantar, Pantar sounds a bit like a robot from Power Rangers, Pantar. Um, but it's a great lens. I really like it. It's it's like it's not tack sharp or anything. It's sharp. Like don't get me wrong, it's sharp, but it, it has a really cool look to it. Um, a sort of vintage look, and I really like how it renders it renders things. It's a very different look to say my Super Takuma lenses for my Pentax SV, and that's cool. I mean, you want your different lenses and your different cameras to give you a different feeling, or else, I mean, if everything made the same picture at the end of the day, then what's the point of having different cameras, right? And I really like the way that this uh, lens renders images and the 45 millimeter focal length is pretty cool. It's like just a little bit wider than your nifty 50. And I feel like you can kind of feel that it's a little bit wider. Um, and so you just get a bit more of the scene in. It's, it seems to be just a little bit better for like, um, you know, walking around, photo walks, that sort of thing. This camera came out in about 1958, 1959, around that period. So just before the 60s, um, when the German makers were still king. And this guy was made for your kind of quite well-off amateur. So it, it, it's designed for, for amateurs as opposed to professionals. You know, whatever that means. And, um, but, but it's made at a premium. The materials are very nice. It, 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 it is built well, you know, they always say, oh, it's built like a tank, you know, that's such a cliche by now, but it is. It's a solid metal thing with leatherette and everything's mechanical and everything. Listen, I mean, just, just listen to it. I mean, just listen to how nice it sounds. Everything works. It's like a cool old clock or something. 
and it, it's heavy you know I think I read it weighs nearly 700 grams which if you uh, is about 16 tons in pounds um, so you could you could really do some damage so one or two little oddities about the camera little things that I found just odd I mean it has no um, it has no holes for a strap so it has no strap effectively which which is kind of annoying if you're walking around you you, you know you now you have to hold it all the time you know you can't just put it over your shoulder or something and now that's obviously because these cameras in that time came with like leather cases and those leather cases would have had the strap on them um, so when you were walking around you kept the camera in the leather case or at least the bottom of the leather case and then that had the straps and then you were all good but now 60 years later whatever those those leather cases have all perished and I mean you might get lucky you might find one with a, with a leather case but mine definitely didn't come with one other thing my camera came with a, a lens hood look at this look at this cool little thing so this lens hood I'm gonna try and screw this on now without looking like an idiot Oh, too late Oh, too late again come on get in there everyone's judging me okay good it actually came with this lens hood now this is like a rubber a rubber lens hood I kind of think it looks like a plunger you know like a toilet plunger it's pretty silly and I'm sure you could sort of suction cup it oh crap you could almost suction cup it to your hand I think um, and I actually when I got the camera my first thought was that this was someone just made it you know it was like a like a MacGyver fix for for lens flare or something but no, if you look on, 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 the, on the rim, you can actually see um, Zeiss Icon branding and made in Germany. So yeah, this plunger is a Zeiss Icon plunger. And I just keep it on the lens. If, it's, if, it's, if it reduces flare, then that's great. Sort of ruins the aesthetic a little bit, doesn't it? It's sort of, it looks kind of ridiculous. But if it helps with image quality, then it's worth it. So now we come to probably the coolest and cleverest part for me of, this, of using this camera. And I, I love how, how clever these Germans are you know um, because obviously the exposure meter has got a really cool system um, but the focusing system is also really cool so they've got like this red dot system right it's even in the manual like they encourage you to use this where on the top of the camera you'll see a uh, f8 is in red and your shutter speed selector is in red and there's also a little red dot on your focusing scale between 5 meters and 10 meters right now if you align your focusing, if you if you point the little focusing arrow at that red dot, right, and you set your lens to f8, everything from 3 meters up until infinity will be in focus, right? So now effectively this camera is a point and shoot. It's a fixed focus point and shoot camera. Now, if you're walking around like in the streets or you go for a walk in the park or whatever and you're just taking snaps of the buildings and maybe there's you know the, the landscapes or there's pretty flowers or something in the distance f8 red dot everything from three meters up until infinity is in focus and you can snap away without thinking of anything all you need to worry about then is your shutter speed to make sure that your exposure is correct but you know with your light meter you you sort it easy copy you can focus as close to just below a meter so that's like three feet um, but of course, you know, now we're heading into tape measure territory where you've got to be quite, quite close uh, to 100% to, to correct or else you're going to lose focus. This is not a camera I would use for like macro photography um, or like extreme close-ups or even portraits that are quite close, you know, because you, you're not going to nail the focus. I mean, you could, you, you, you could, I mean, and if you do, the lens is sharp. Um, but if you don't want to walk around with a tape measure all the time, um, then don't use it for that purpose. It wasn't intended for that purpose. It was intended to be used by amateurs walking around, taking happy snaps on holiday. F8 and be there. You know that saying, F8 and be there? This camera literally is an F8 and be there camera. And for that purpose, it's really good. So now we'll take a look at some of the photographs I've taken with this camera, in both, uh, with both black and white film and color. Uh, you'll see mo mostly the, 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 the shots are sort of F8 and be there type shots, sort of happy snap type shots. There were one or two where you could see that I definitely had to guess the distance to the subject, and most of the time I was more or less correct.
There's one black and white photograph in particular where I did a little experiment with myself just to see if I could guess the distance correctly where I tried to take a photograph of a flower uh, outside our back door um, that was one meter away. Well I tried to guess a meter and to shoot it at f2.8 to see how nice the, the shallow focus areas will look, the bouquet, you know. And I almost nailed it. I, I got so close to nailing the focus that um, I still posted that on Instagram because it was it was so close. I was quite chuffed, and uh, I, I really like that image because it was it was it was kind of lucky. All right, guys. So anyway, that pretty much sums up this little discussion. I mean, it's hardly a review. I know it's not scientific or anything, but the Zeiss Icon Continuamatic 2 is a great little camera. Yeah, it's got a pretty ridiculously long name, and it's not like a pedigree camera. It's not worth like thousands of dollars but that's what makes it cool you know is that it's affordable you can get one now I don't know how much they'll go for on, on eBay I wouldn't pay more than like maybe 70 or 80 dollars for the thing you know um, just make sure you've got a working one and and go out and use it you know it's not it's not really a, a shelf ornament I don't think it's meant to be kept you know in a museum you know they made a lot of these things you know they, they, they're tools so get yourself one use it take photographs with it don't just like stare at it don't just you know if, if you're just going to put your camera on a shelf then give it to somebody else who will use it um rant over anyway um so that pretty much sums it up there's a whole bunch of other zeiss icon container models they're all good apparently there's, there's a variety of different lenses as well zeiss lenses are great i don't think you can really go wrong with any of them so the main the main thing is just find a working one if the light meter is not working, it's not the end of the world because the camera will still fire. It's still a mechanical camera. It will still fire even with, uh, without a working light meter. You'll just have to carry an external light meter around with you. If you find one with a working light meter, score because it's a very accurate meter. Like I've tested it, it's accurate, like really good. It's amazing what they could do in 1959, 1958, eh? crazy. But anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.